the business of the music business with Erica Von Kleist. And we're back. Welcome to part two of my mini money series. Wait, there's that ticker again. The information in this video is anecdotal based on my personal experiences. For real financial advice, talk to a CPA or a financial advisor. We're gonna take a look at all that money you made in episode one and take it a step farther. Far into the distant future, to April 15th, tax day. I don't think anyone likes taxes except for the politicians who keep raising them for hardworking people like you and me, or the billionaires who don't have to pay them at all. <laughs> taxes dictate how we manage and spend our money, what we invest in, and what we save. Here's an overview of what a self-employed musician can expect. When you're self-employed and you're hired for a gig, you're often asked to fill out a W-9. The folks that hire you use this form for reporting your income to the IRS. In January, you will receive a 1099 form from said company if you earned $600 or more from them that previous year. That income has been reported to the IRS and it's your responsibility to claim it when you do your taxes. You'll notice that on a 1099, no taxes are taken out. You're on the hook for paying those taxes on that income. Now, if you worked as an employee, they probably had you fill out a W-4 form. In January, you'll receive what's called a W-2 form. This money has also been reported to the IRS and you'll notice that taxes have been taken out. Not sure about the difference between being an employee or being self-employed and all of these different forms? Watch my video called, What is a Musician? To be clear, if the majority of your work has been reported on a 1099 form, you can expect to pay taxes in April. But what about a tax refund? You'll likely only get a tax refund if you worked a job where taxes were already taken out and your income was reported on a W-2 form. Also, tax refunds are not free money from the government. It's your money. You get money back in a refund if you overpaid your taxes from your paycheck throughout the year. Because most self-employed people do not have W-2 income, we usually owe taxes come April. Side note, if you get a tax refund, that means that the government has been holding on to that money. That's your money, and it wasn't sitting in a retirement account or accruing any interest. Not only that, inflation has devalued that money, so when you get that money back, that money's actually worth less than it was when it was initially withheld. That's why when you start a job as an employee, it's important to fill out your W-4 form in such a way so not as much money is withheld. Yes, this might mean that you actually end up owing money, but at least you can put that money away into an account that accrues interest so that it's not losing value over time. So you just got your 1099s and your W-2s from your employers. What now? First, get all your forms together. Don't lose them. Also, keep track of who you worked for in that previous year because some employers may forget to send you a 1099 or maybe it went to an old address. You might also get tax forms based on your marketplace health insurance or unemployment insurance if you received any. Hold onto these forms and I must reiterate, an accountant will be helpful when doing your taxes right. Let's talk about your band. Your jazz group played a weekly gig at a restaurant all last year. That restaurant paid you, or your LLC, all of the money. You then wrote checks to each of your band members whenever you guys did a gig. In January, you then receive a 1099 from the restaurant that reflects all of the money that they paid you last year and it's been reported to the IRS. Are you on the hook for all those taxes, even the money that you paid to your band members? No, here's what you gotta do. You have to send your individual band members each a 1099 form stating how much money you paid them. $600 is the income threshold for sending someone a 1099. If you pay them less, then you can just count that money as a deduction. More on deductions in a moment. When you send out that 1099, you're stating to the IRS that that money didn't come to you, it came through you or your company. It's your band member's responsibility to handle their own taxes based on the 1099 that you send them. Basically, you do not owe taxes on income that simply went into the hands of others who worked for you. 
This is where having an LLC comes in super handy because running your money through a company helps you keep things clear and clean. Now time for deductions. Deductions are a blessing and a curse for a self-employed musician. Basically, deductions are professionally related business expenses. Reads, manuscript paper, computer equipment, microphones are deductions for someone like me. You can also deduct things like suits for gigs, stage makeup, and dining out if it's directly related to your profession, like a business meeting. If you work from home, like I do, you can deduct the portion of the square footage of your home that you use for business and the associated utilities. Oh, and remember the money that you paid your band members? That's considered a personnel expense. That money came through you, not to you. Be sure you keep track of how much money you paid each of your musicians so that you can dole out those 1099s in January. Oh, and if you're trying to keep track of the money that you pay to other people, don't pay them in cash. Write a check so there's a paper trail. What's great about deductions for musicians is that so much of what we do in our day-to-day -day lives is tax deductible because our lives are so intertwined with our business. And the more you deduct from your yearly income, the less you have to pay in taxes in April. Time to party? Not so fast. Zeroing out your income so that you don't have to pay taxes sounds great, but I'm in the time of my life where I'm trying to qualify for loans and mortgages. This is really difficult to do when you don't show much net income. So the catch 22 for a self-employed musician is, you constantly need to invest in your career. That's creating more deductions and therefore a lower tax bill. However, if you need to show income to look good to a bank when you're hoping to get a mortgage, those deductions can haunt you. So then you take fewer deductions, leaving you with a higher tax bill, and then all that money you really need to spend on necessities like gear and reads ends up getting spent on taxes, making it harder to run your business in the first place. Yup. Often what musicians do is save up a lot of money for the end of the year. This way you can have a good look at how much money you made and make informed decisions about buying gear or big ticket deduction items to help decrease your overall income. Or you can decide not to buy anything business related so that you can show more income if you're applying for loans. There are a lot more ins and outs when it comes to taxes, especially if you own a company, if you have a family or own property. The rest is best left up to a qualified financial professional who can accurately help you navigate this often confusing part of your business life. But understanding the basics of how it all works will hopefully guide you in your initial financial decisions when embarking on a career in the arts. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bomb with yours truly, Eric Von Kleist. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out on ericavonkleist.com.